Hi, this is Tim, G4WIM. This is a, a short video I'm doing about a Yesu Fox Tango 101 ZD Mark III. Its serial number is 1I271198, which means it was built around about July 1981. So getting quite old, 30 plus years old. So what we're going to do is to just check its received performance to start off with, then how many microvolts it needs for S9 on the S meter, the receiver conversion gain, the frequency accuracy, the power output, and transmitter harmonics. We'll do this for all bands, uh, but I might only just show you the results for like one or two bands. So we'll start off with the receiver performance. Uh, according to Yesu, the sensitivity is 0.25 microvolts for 10 dB signal to noise ratio in SSB and SCW. So that's 0.25 microvolts PD potential difference at the antenna input. Uh, my signal generator is actually calibrated in EMF, electromotive force. So what that means is instead of setting 0.25 microvolts, I actually set mine for um, 0.5 microvolts. As you can see there, 0.5 microvolts electromotive force. And it, the RF is turned off at the moment and the frequency is set to 14.2 megahertz. And then to measure the output of the receiver, over here we have a very accurate electronic digital voltmeter which I've set up to measure in dBs relative. At the moment it's showing minus 67 dB, that's because there's no thing coming out of the receiver. If I turn up the volume on the receiver now to a point where we just get 0 dB, that'll be our set point on noise. Quite hard to set it accurately, but I get around about there. That's as close as I can probably get to 0 dB. Now if I turn on the RF generator, you'll hear a tone, and that reading will go up, and it should go up to sort of more than 10 dB. And there you have it. So we're actually getting a 12.9 dB same signal to noise ratio for uh, 0.25 volts potential difference into the receiver. Just out of interest, I'll turn the RF level down a little bit lower to 0.25 microvolts EMF and turn it on again. That's 2.5 microvolts EMF. And we're still getting uh, 7.4 dB signal to noise ratio. So even with um, half the specified input, it's still performing pretty well. Let's turn it off a second. Another thing we can do while we're at this is check the receiver conversion gain. And to do that, we put in a slightly stronger signal to make the measurement easier, but not so strong as it compresses the um, receiver front end. So what I'm going to do now, instead of working in terms of microvolts, I'm going to work in terms of dB. I'm going to set the amplitude to at minus 80 dBm. RF on. Quite a big signal now, as you can imagine. Turn that down so we don't deafen ourselves. And you can see now that the S meter, I'm going to get it focused. If it'll focus. Is about S9 plus 5 dB. We'll come back to S meter reading in just a minute. On the spectrum analyzer here, um, the large peak, I'm not sure how well this is going to show. Peak search. The large peak is at minus 69.5 dB. So we're putting in minus 80 and getting minus 69.5 out. Which means we've got about 11.5 dB of conversion gain in the front end at 14.2 megahertz, which is just about right for this type of receiver of, of this age. Don't want to gain too high in the receiver, otherwise it will um, cause problems further down the receiver chain. So just going back to the S meter reading, for S9, the specification is 50 microvolts. So I'm just going to set the amplitude here 
to um, 100 microvolts EMF, which is 50 microvolts PD, and that should be reading S9. As you can see, it's reading S9 plus about 10 dB, which is a bit on the high side. We just turn the RF level down a bit so it does read S9. down a bit now, I'll go down, uh, that's S9, and it's about 20 microvolts EMF, which is 10 volts, 10 microvolts PD into a receiver, so, so clearly this uh, S meter is over generous on this band, only taking uh, 10 microvolts instead of 50 microvolts to make it read S9. But as you'll find, the gain will vary from band to band and across the band. So you can never really get to read S9 for exactly 50 microvolts PD on all bands and all frequencies. So that's the performance on, on 20 meters. Let's go to um, 10 meters now. Let's go to 28.2 megahertz. And I'll just change the generator frequency here. 28. 2 megahertz, and there we have a signal. I'll just tune it a little bit so we get a different note. Even though I'm putting in 28.2 megahertz dead, I'm tuning a little bit low, 2 kilohertz low, so I can hear the beat note. In fact, we can do a quick frequency check here. I'm putting in a signal at 20. 8.2. I'm tuned to 1 to 28.198, which should be a two a two kilohertz tone. But in actual fact, if we look at the audio frequency coming out on the modulation meter here, you see that the tone is actually 2.0379. So it's actually 38 hertz off. So the actual frequency accuracy on 10 meters is really quite good. Only a mere 38 hertz off. That should be exactly. 2 kilohertz with all zeros and we're getting 38.1 hertz off there. So let's just go back to the S meter again. So again S9, peaked on S9 there and we've got uh, 10 microvolts PD in the receiver. So actually the S meter is reading the same on this band for S9 is what it did for, for uh, 20 meters, so at least it's consistently high on, on these two bands. Let's do a sensitivity check now. Let's set this um, amplitude to 0.5 microvolts EMF, which is 0.25 microvolts PD, and we'll just make sure the receivers peak nicely. nice note here which is easy to detect out there we'll turn off the RF level for now so we can go back to the millivolt meter zero that out to zero dB which is about there put the carrier on again and we get 14.6 dB signal to noise ratio thereabouts which is again well within specification it's going to be 8.2 megahertz thing to note about, about this signal to noise measurement is I'm measuring signal and noise to noise so the readings aren't quite exactly signal to noise because I'm actually measuring all the noise with this signal so probably reads you know, a fraction of a a dB high but still gives a very good indication that the receiver is really performing very nicely indeed so I just put the RF level up again to minus 80 dBm now strong signal um, like that. turn the RF on big, big fat tone coming out of the uh, S meter out of the receiver there now, just for kicks, let's see how linear 
this S meter is as we increase the, R, the RF level into the receiver. So what I'll do, I'll just reduce the RF level slightly until such time as it reads S9. So that's S9 there. And now I'm going to increase the RF level up by 10 dB. Okay, go up by 10 dB and the beta should read S9 plus 10. And it's reading S9 plus about 8. They should take it to S9 plus 20. It's reading S9 plus 12. It should be 30. So actually, once it gets above S9, the S meter is quite stingy. So it's a little bit generous up to S9, over, reads, reads too high, and once you get above S9, dB is above S9, it gets a bit stingy. Just out of interest, we'll switch the 10 dB attenuator, and it's reading S9 plus 20 at the moment. It's reading S9 plus 20, so I'll put 10 dB of attenuation in, and that does drop by 10 dB, so the attenuator's good. Put 20 dB and that should drop to S9, and it goes drop drops to S9. So the input attenuator is quite good both 10 dB and 20 dB step.